Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and welcome to lesson five of our free wire wrapping masterclass designed to take you from a complete beginner to having taught you everything that I know and that I'm learning. Um, and today we are focusing on herringbone. All of the tools, materials, and previous lessons of the Wire Wrapping Masterclass are linked down in the video description below, so we are going to get directly into it. If you're here during the premiere, hey everybody, thank you so, so much for joining me. I'm really excited to get our wires and our pliers out and get our craft on. So herringbone um, is a very common design that I've seen a lot, even through like um, vintage jewelry and stuff. As far as I'm aware, it originated with basket weaving and then was later adapted to be used with wire as well. So I consider it a very traditional uh, wire wrapping style and it is just so versatile and so beautiful and elegant and there's so many different ways that you can make it your own um, and hopefully we'll go over some of those ways. We are going to start with just jumping right in and making bracelet links um, because that captures the very essence of herringbone and once you kind of get that down, everything else is just a fun variation. So the links that I'm going to be using, or the beads that I'm going to be using to make the links are these large hold cube beads that I have that are a little irregular. They're tiger iron, which I think is just beautiful. So if you can kind of see there how it has little flashes of that tiger's eye, but it's mostly red jasper and hematite. So it's very, I love it. And we are going to be including some little four millimeter beads on either end of that. And we're going to be wrapping using 18 gauge. These are American wire gauge, 18 gauge in the silver plated silver from parawire.com and wrapping with 20 gauge. Now, I typically try to use the thickest wire that I can um, for designs like this. I could, with these beads, get away with using even a 16 gauge for the core, but I don't think I could fit a 16 gauge through our four millimeter, so I'm just gonna be using the 18 gauge. So yeah, whenever I'm trying to figure out, like you might not have the same wire gauges in stock as what I do. And so, um, you know, you can definitely tweak this a bit to use you know, what you have on hand. And I do also have my chainmail kit that is linked down in the video description below. Those links are affiliate links, so purchasing through them is a great way to help support the channel at no additional cost to you. Um, the only size that I'm using today is the 18 gauge 1 8 inch, which let's see, I've got that in chicken nuggets over here. Um, the 18 gauge is 1.2 millimeter, and the 1 8 inch doesn't say. Crap. And I knocked off my other one. <laughs> oh, I was trying so hard to be professional. Um, but that's the only size that I'm using, and I'm just using it for attaching the clasp and for attaching the links to each other. Let's see. 3.2 millimeter is the inner diameter of the is the size of the 1 8 inch. That is the inner diameter of the ring. But you could use really whatever you have on hand. You could make your own jump rings. You could make um, little bead link uh, connectors as well. And I'm starting off with cutting four inches of our 18 gauge wire. I typically do six links for a bracelet. though I think I'm just going to wrap a few. I'm not going to make the whole bracelet here on camera um, because we're making, today we are making an earring design, the bracelet, bracelet links. I was going to try to demonstrate um, making the herringbone bracelet on memory wire, but I don't have any memory wire, y'all. Like, I could have sworn that I did, but I was searching high and low and cannot for the life of me find it. So, um... Yeah, uh, there will be other tutorials that I have done with varying degrees of uh, staying in frame 
Um, <laughs> but there are other herringbone tutorials that I've done linked down in the video description. So hopefully this video will give you a very solid foundation that will help make some of our older tutorials where maybe I forgot to add information or I wandered out of frame or half the tutorial was missing in general. Um, those of y'all who've been following the channel for a long time may remember an infamous um, herringbone pendant tutorial that I had done where half of it got lost during editing and the other half I wasn't in frame for like at all. Um, <laughs> so uh, we actually get so much hate on that um, tutorial that we pulled it down because we're like, yes, we know this is useless. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, but we are revisiting that design here today. Now, I do recommend, the, they are not necessary, but having a pair of nylon jaw pliers to make your wire very clean and crispy and no little, um, no kinks or, like, the smoother your wire can be, the better your weaving is going to look. So, to straighten our core wires... But yeah, bracelet on memory wire. We're going to be doing a pendant with beads in a simple way. We're going to be doing a pendant with an undrilled cabochon um, wrap as well as two different, way two different ways of wrapping rings and a pendant with layers um, <laughs> using a bead. So it's, there's a lot. Buckle in because this is a master class starting now. <laughs> uh, and so yeah, just by holding on to our wire and running it through our nylon jaw pliers, that work hardens it. But also, you can kind of see the two side by side just before and after running it through the pliers. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And these nylon jaw are probably my favorite nylon jaw I've ever used because the material it seems to be holding up better. Some of the nylon jaw pliers that I had been using, it's like the plastic had deteriorated or something prior to them coming into my possession, even though they were new and packaged. Um, and so I would go like this and like the the jaw would break and I'm finding it the styles that have a screw through it those are the ones that I have the worst success with because uh, it'll break or be crumbly whereas these guys doing, doing me pretty good okay so there we have our three core wires nice and tidied up and so these are the examples um, just to give you an idea real quick of what bead size you might prefer the look of. Um, these are 10 millimeter bicones with an 18 gauge core and 20 gauge weaving. These are 8 millimeter with the same gauges of wire. And these right here are 6 millimeter bicones, again, with the same gauge of wire. Now, something that's optional through all of these is you could use head pins. Um, I don't recommend it for the bracelet, but for the earrings, uh, you could use a pre-made head pin or ball pin. Those look very nice, I think. But if you don't have any of that stuff, just having some wire will do the trick. So, <clears throat> from here, we've got our 20 gauge for doing our weaving. We've got our 18 gauge for our core. And the stiffer of a wire that you can go with for the core wire, the better, because it will help prevent distorting as we get into doing our wrapping. And we'll talk, that'll make more sense kind of as we get into it. So I've threaded our bead and the two smaller beads on, and I'm going to be using my round nose pliers. I'd like to trim... I'm going to risk zooming in for a better look. I'm going to trim the end of our wire like that. Because to demonstrate, depending on which side you've snipped with your pliers or your wire snips, um, see how it made like a pointy end there? We want a nice flat end. So I try to use the flat side of my flush cutters to make a nice flat end. And from here, I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to grip as close to the end of my wire and as close to the end of my pliers as I can. 
and just make a little loop. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is what will be going around our wire. So you don't want to make your loop too small to fit over your core wire. But you can see here how it has that little gap still. We can totally close that down a little tighter. There we go. And now I am going to use the box hinge section of my round nose pliers to just grab that and do a little, very little bend. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this will enable us to slide that on. and to start building our herringbone wrap without it being too off center. So I'm actually gonna bend it a good bit further and I'm gonna just use some flat nose pliers for that. So pretty, almost not quite a 90 degree bend, but it's getting there. So now we can slide this down and we can choose which face of our bead we would like to be facing forward. And from here, you can see I've kind of bent it a little too much. It's a little too uh, geometric for what I'm going for. And that's the only one who can make that decision about your work is you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I've eased up on that bend just a little bit and we'll slide this back down and then you'll notice if where my hand is is the back and this side is the front so back side front side the front is a side facing us our wire here is exiting on the front so as we bring it around we want to keep it <clears throat> excuse me on the front as opposed to going around behind. So we'll bring it around and I'm just bracing it with my finger and thumb and I have my first finger in here. I'm just using that to train the wire around our core wire until it's exiting to the other side. This is our last chance to make sure that the face of the bead that we want facing forward is actually, well, it's kind of secured in there. <clears throat> that doesn't matter as much with a round bead uh, as it does with a square, because a square will get kind of held in place. And I'm actually going to use my fingernail, you could use also your pliers, to squish that down just to make it a little bit more curved. We're going to bring this around like so, just on the other side. And I'm again guiding with my fingernail to shape this around that core wire. And that is one repetition. And you can do as many repetitions as you like. I tend to personally enjoy doing at least three. So again, this time as we place the wire, I'm placing it just a little behind our first layer. And then we're going to bring it around. And then have it travel like you don't want it to be on top of. You just want it to nestle a little next to and behind. And twisting around. <clears throat> For enameled copper wire, I don't typically go over 20 gauge, but you can get aluminum wire. And this is a 16 gauge aluminum wire. And we're going to be using that on another project in this video. But man, it's a dummy thick and it's so soft and supple. So it's actually easier to shape and manipulate than this 20 gauge uh, enameled copper. 
So let's go ahead and do a third layer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Coming around. And yeah, I think three layers will be perfectly good. <clears throat> and so now here for the finishing, I want to snip again with the flat end of my pliers. Let's zoom in. So there you can see, I'm just going to come in and snip. And then we can bring that end around and in using my handy dandy bent nose pliers that I like so much. And I just want to whoop, smush it in a bit. And that's how it looks on the front. <clears throat> the camera really does not do justice to how beautiful, like it's not picking up on any of the beautiful brick reds. In this piece, there you can kind of see some of the variation, but it's so shiny that it just reflects the color right off. But these, these beads really are gorgeous. And so now from here, we can do, we can treat this just like how we would um, one of our wrapped loops, like wrapped links from lesson one. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate just in case to catch you up. We could take this and bend it to a 90 degree. Give ourselves about 10 millimeters, 10 to 12 millimeters. <clears throat> and then come in here and just make a little loop. Again, I'm not going to go into too much depth on making the loops because we do have an entire master class just on that. And this one's perfect for you can actually open it and then hook it to <clears throat> an ear hook. Like this could be an earring instead of a bracelet link and then we can make a loop and hang another charm from it. Or if you want something a little bit more secure, we can give ourselves about three or four millimeters past where our weaving stopped. And do a bend. <clears throat> Sorry, I keep clearing my throat, but it's I'm still recovering from being ill. And uh, <clears throat> couldn't take any time off, so here we are. <laughs> I appreciate y'all being here and your patience and understanding and that... Uh, just trying to get over being ill. So we've wrapped around and in this loop here we want to keep it kind of centered. We can straighten it up in a bit. And then we'll grab this. Oops. And just keep shaping around. Then we're going to come in, snip just that tail wire, because <clears throat> something that may have happened is you don't want to come in and cut like this, because we're going to cut our loop too. And so we'll just get in there. I'm covering it with my fingers so it doesn't shoot off and get me in the face. But then we will come in. See how it's sticking out? And we can just smush that with our flat nose pliers to get it to be smushed down and in. And if you, if you feel like that's still going to snag stuff before you smush it down, you could have filed the end of it with a metal file to make it be more rounded. <clears throat> and for this style of loop, it will not open unless the wire is cut. So we would need to join them together with jump rings or you could do one end be like this and one end be like that. And I would actually turn it. That way this end could hook through this end. But that's just me. 
I personally prefer to join them with jump rings because I think I make it makes it drape a little nicer. And if you want some nice curve in your bracelet, you can actually take your fingers and press your link to where it will lay a little bit more curved against the wrist. Because with longer links like this, uh, having it be perfectly straight might end up being a little blocky, especially if it's on the curve of your wrist. <clears throat> so that is one way of making a herringbone link. Actually, it's two ways. <laughs> and we will move on to the next design. I am going to be finishing that bracelet. Um, like, to finish, finish the bracelet, I would... Um, we could hand make one of our own clasps, like from lesson three uh, of the Wire Wrapping Master Class. Or you could just use... A store-bought stainless steel lobster claw clasp and I would have just attached that with a jump ring right there <clears throat> and we'll go over that um, doing jump rings and stuff here in a little bit so something that can happen is sometimes whenever you're making your link it might not be as perfectly centered as you want, in which case you can hold on to the core wire with some smooth jaw pliers and just kind of wiggle and pull, like because you're rotating all of that as you pull down and it might leave a little bit of marking from where the wire is very tight on your core, but it lets you reposition it, which that can be a really nice option to have. <clears throat> Also, if you don't have quite enough wire to do a wrapped loop, but you want something a little bit more secure, you can just bend off in each direction like this. And I'm actually going to be using my uh, mandrel jaw pliers and on the second smallest mandrel. And I'm just going to start coiling this in making it almost like a key ring and that makes quite a big loop but it makes a substantial enough loop that we can fit multiple rings through it so this is a great way of incorporating in with you could do alternate links of herringbone and then byzantine chainmail possibly like uh the size that I make my loops directly correlates with what I'm trying to fit into those loops. Um, so <laughs> uh, just go however large or small is what you feel you need for your project. But to demonstrate, <clears throat> I've made a couple of links here. I was going to try to get the whole bracelet made, but I figured we could go ahead and carry on with the project. now. With doing loops like this, you can sometimes run into little pokey bits. Um, in which case, you can just take your snips and whoop, tailor that down, or you could file it. Or what I really recommend is to just give yourself an extra little bit. Like, just an inch can really make a difference. Give yourself enough core wire that you do have enough to do a wrapped loop. <clears throat> But I did want to go over how I would finish the ends because if this is your first time making a bracelet maybe or if like I do recommend going through and practicing along with lessons one through four of the master class series because um, well that's why they're there is to provide a nice foundation for you to build each of your techniques off of but just in case. I didn't want to be like yeah just do that and then like I, I'd rather demonstrate it to y'all. So I'm just grabbing a pinch of those 18 gauge 1 8 inch rings and let's go ahead and dig out a clasp. <clears throat> and the way that I would join, let's see if we can't zoom in just a little. The way that I would join the links of the bracelet or necklace together would be we would open up a jump ring 
which I'm going to take this as another opportunity for sh some shameless self-promotion. Um, if you uh, are interested in learning to weave chain mail, we are also simultaneously doing a chain mail masterclass that is um, leading you through like lesson one was spiral chain with three different variations. Lesson two is was helm chain uh, with again three variations. And it just takes you through different ways that you can apply that and it just wire wrapping and chain mail goes so well hand in hand because if you have wire you can make rings <clears throat> that you can then weave into chain mail if your heart so desires but yeah so this is representative of, this is the smallest loop I would go with, and that's the largest, really, that I would go with. Um, unless I were trying to, like, have that loop really be a design element. Because you could go, I mean, you could go huge. It's, there's no, there's no right or wrong way to do any of this stuff. As long as it looks like how you want, is holding together, and is comfortable to wear, then you did it correctly. <clears throat> so... From the side, I do like how substantial these double loops are, but again, in lesson one, we did go over how you can do a double loop that's then wrapped. That way you don't have any risk of something snagging. And then the way that we would attach our clasp is we would just open up the ring, hook on our clasp, and then hook it onto the loop. And then typically the way that I finish my bracelets is we will either just have a loop there on the end that um, the clasp can hook through. And this is this bracelet is only two links long, so it's not, you know, <clears throat> pretend with me like it's finished. So we could either hook onto it like that, or I could add an extender chain that I'm going to demonstrate just real quick. And it typically... For my extender chains, I really like to use an 18 gauge 3 16 inch ring, and I usually will use four or five of them. And we make most of our bracelets to around seven and a half inches, even though I personally wear an eight inch uh, bracelet that seems seven and a half just seems to be a really good uh, median for. <laughs> Uh, you know, we've got some folks who have like six inch wrists. We've got a lot of folks who've got like a nine inch wrist. So it's, but seven and a half with a bit of extender seems to be a good one size fits most. And then we do all always offer customization for our bracelets. And if we don't have the stuff there on hand to extend the design, um, then we'll take a custom order and we'll take it home and, uh, either remake it or extend it and then ship it off to the client after getting their uh, stamp of clearance being like yep that's good send it off so I've got one closed ring and one opened ring and whenever we close our rings and I'm just hooking that through the end of our bracelet so to speak to close it I just want to make sure that the ends are lining up and whenever rings are cut there's actually a little bit of material missing. So to get those ends to meet, I wiggle it back and forth until the metal is almost pushing past itself. That way it will apply, apply pressure that will keep that ring very snug and closed. And that's just butted, like we don't do riveted or um, soldered or welded or anything like that yet. <laughs> so sky's the limit. It's never too early or too late to learn a new craft or expand on what you already know but yeah and we go into way more depth about jump rings in the chainmail tutorials as well but that gives you just a little bit of extender chain sometimes we'll put a little charm on the end or something to make it kind of a fun dangly bracelet if the client is into that but that if you just pretend like the whole rest of the bracelet is in between there this is the essentials of how we build a bracelet so I hope that that's helpful to y'all. <clears throat> so up next, we are going to go over um, the earrings. So to do that, there are products on the market called, 
I can't find them. Head pins. And head pins are super mega handy. Here it is. I have this little organizer. And sometimes you can find decorative head pins, like this guy here, that's got a really cute like filigree pattern on both sides, which I think is nice. And you could attach a charm or you know what have you. You could do the herringbone on this end and have it hang down that way. So those are kind of fun. I really like these decorative. These are a really fun way. In fact, we might do one using that. Um, though this one's really not, I'd go for a three inch head pin if you can. So like here we have, nope, that's that one. Here we go. This is a ball head pin. This is steel that's been enameled and it's just got that little tip there and that can keep your herringbone from sliding down and I'm not going to be using one of these um, and then here's just a regular head pin see how it kind of looks like the head of a nail and what this accomplishes is if you were to thread on um, a bead so long as the hole of the bead isn't larger than the head of the head pin then it's a wonderful way of making little dangle drops so it's just, that's a nice um, thing to know that exists, but is in no way necessary. And I'm going to show you guys how to make the herringbone earrings or drops. Like, because you could do a charm bracelet with herringbone hanging off. Like the herringbone itself doesn't have to be in line the way that this is. It could be just a drop that hangs down. And that's a really pretty uh, design option. So we are going to be using these 10 millimeter amethyst. Again, my camera doesn't, between the camera and the lighting, it never really picks up on purples, which these are such a pretty purple, it breaks my heart, but we'll be fine. We are again going to be using the 18 gauge uh, core wire. And I'm gonna go ahead and straighten this out, just with it here on the spool. And I just know that I'm going to want to have this nice and work hardened and very, very smooth because we are going to be like how I showed you before, how you can like wiggle and adjust where on the core wire your wrapping is with this one, we're going to be pulling it through. Um, so you really want it very smooth and sleek and no little gnarls and bumps. And we still really only need three or four inches. I always give myself a pair of wires affordable enough that you can give yourself an extra little bit of leeway without breaking the bank. So there's those two. And we are going to just be using the one 10 millimeter bead. And we're going to be wrapping with, ooh, you know, we could, no, well, okay, we'll do the, <laughs> I was going to try to demonstrate with some 22 gauge, which if you want something a little bit more um, dainty than the 20 gauge, with the way that wire gauges work is the larger the number, the thinner the wire. So, you know, here we have, you know, 16 gauge, and you can see how thick that is. And then here's the 20 gauge. So if it's thicker, it's a smaller number. Okay, so now from here, I want to trim that end so that we have a nice flat end. I'm going to zoom back in. And kind of scooch a few things out of the way. And then we're going to make that loop. And then I'm going to come through and I'm going to curve it just a bit. This is a great opportunity. You could use your mandrel pliers. And I'm going to go with the 10 millimeter mandrel. And you can actually shape that around like so. And then we can thread on our 10 millimeter bead. And then I'm just going to thread through our loop. Oh, I don't know why I'm doing it weird. I'm going to thread onto the loop and then put the bead on. And I'm going to come to about the center of our wire just because that's a comfortable place for me to work. And you can see how just nice and snug by pre-shaping that wire, I get a much more clean and consistent result than if I'm trying to do it freehand. 
And so just pressing and turning. And I try to have it exit. You could have it exit much more towards the front, but I like to have it at least in line, if not a little farther back. Let's go with in line on this one. And if you're noticing little kinks and bumps in your wire, I like to just take my fingernail and press against it and just smooth that out just a bit. And that way we're only really work hardening what we're fixing to be working with, not farther up on the spool. And so holding, bracing that wire with my finger and thumb and then supporting it with my index finger, I'm just gonna turn around and then just like that. Again, making sure that we're keeping the wire on the front side. Whichever side of the wire you're doing that on, just be consistent and you'll get a good result. And so stacking it below the first wire. Coming around and there we go. Positioning that second wire and coming around. This is actually one of the fastest wire wraps that I do uh, when I'm not teaching, like when I'm just, if, if any of y'all ever hang out in our Friday live streams, there is one that we were doing that I got like uh, a lot, <laughs> a lot, like 13 pairs of earrings made. Um, and that's with chit chatting and everything. So I really, really love how this is looking. And you just wanna make sure that you have the same number on both sides. We have three on this side and two on the other. So I'm gonna complete this rotation. And then I'm gonna come around and whoop, here on the back. Now we could go for, let's, let's go ahead and even though I think I prefer it at three, um, let's go ahead and do a fourth because you can see it's really starting to stack up nice there on the side. It's coming around. Straighten that wire out. And then it's stacking it in line with the others because the smoother and straighter your wire is, the more snug it will fit with the others. Yeah, let's stop at four. I think that looks real nice. And oftentimes I'll start to get this little bit of like layer buildup distortion. And maybe I just needed to bring it around to the back a little bit more. But I think we're all right. If you notice that your design's starting to warp, you might be pulling too hard because you can bend your core wire out of alignment and it'll start to go like <laughs> uh, just a, a bit of a skew. Okay, so we're gonna get in there and we're gonna snip. And then just give it a smush. And there we have that. Now is the tricky part, because you can see I still have a little bit of a line on my thumb from where the wire went and got me. So you want to watch out for it, because it will try to get you. Um, I'm just going to take the end here, using some flat nose pliers. I'm going to use these ones that we have actually ground the tip down to try to get it to be just as absolutely thin as we could get it. And so you can see it's still uh, just a hair thinner, but every little bit. And I'm going to take that and bend up just like that. And you could do more wire than this as well, but I'm going to grip and I'm holding here at the top. That way there's no risk of the wire getting me. And then we just pull through and you can see how that's kind of poking out weird. I just tuck it off to the side, which depending on the size of wire that you're using can hide that. If I were using a thinner wrapping wire, it wouldn't hide it as well. And then you can just snug that down a little bit 
Now on some other earrings, like the ones over here, you can see the way that I did that is I gave it a much longer tail. And you can see how it's kind of showing. If I just, well, if I had done it before I did the wrapped loop and made it all very tight, I could have just flipped it to the other side to be over here instead of over there, and it would have concealed it with the wire. So, I mean, I don't think anybody will look at that and be like, it's garbage. But, you know, if it's your own work, first off, cut yourself a break. Perfection gets in the way of creativity sometimes. And, um, you know, maybe embrace it if it's a little bit messy looking. Uh, embrace it as organic and try again. <clears throat> so, speaking of trying again, I think... Yeah, let's go ahead and make the other earring just to see how they match. Ooh, yeah, because we can focus on trying to make them mirror image because that can get kind of tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make the loop here on the tip just like how we did before. This time, instead of holding with my left hand and bending things around, I'm going to do this the other way. How do I do it? It's so hard sometimes to get your brain like on board because we had, let's see, can we, that was our first loop traveling off to the side. So now we'll want our first loop traveling off to the side. And if you can get it started kind of mirror imaged like that, you should have an easy enough time keeping it consistent. And again, you don't want to, you want to make sure that you don't have the wire falling in behind. You can pull it down, press it through. There we go. So there we have it on the front. And same thing, we're just going to keep that same pattern where we do the twist around. If your wire isn't sitting quite as snug as you would want it to, you can come in with your pliers. And I'm not really gripping the core wire as much as I am just pressing with my pliers like this, that little bit of a gap. Just pushing on the end to get that loop pressed up against our bead. And then here we go to do four rotations, just wrapping around and then wrapping around. Because you could do just a single layer, you could do 20 layers. <laughs> so, and also, you don't necessarily have to stack the wires behind each other, you could build it more outward. And we'll explore that in the cabochon uh, wrap that we're going to do together. So it's three on each side. Now, <clears throat> yeah, I think, ooh, yeah. So here on the side, if I just train this back a little bit more, it's going to help us to get an even, not quite so much of it just building off to the side. So like right here, how I would have just come down if I come back. A little more then it kind of stacks a little cleaner I think so that's pretty cool there we are let's get in there with our wire snips and let's give that a smush well let's do a squish and a smush there we go and now from here I'm gonna do the fold up much deeper using the whole jaw of the pliers and again holding on and keeping my fingers out of the way because I, I had done it I was doing it like this I think yeah and I had pulled and that hook 
right there just went whoop, right oh, oh it hurt so bad and it was right during a live stream so I couldn't even like properly have a fit or anything <laughs> like I was like well gee golly that <laughs> is not what I was thinking and then just tucking that off to the side giving it a smoosh and then from here we could add additional beads you could do some coin like I mean you could use this as a head pin so like just as an example of that you could just start adding on other beads like so many different things that we could do like if you did this super tiny with a form like a ball head pin like the the brass one I had shown you with a four millimeter bead wrapped in like 24 gauge wire would look wicked cool y'all I'm just saying as homemade head pins and depending on the wire that you use you could just turn this tail into the ear hook if you wanted but I like the dangle of dangly earrings so I'm gonna go ahead and bend off to the side and again trying to keep the mirror image so I'm gonna take this one I bent the first one off to the left I'm gonna bend this one off to the right I'm gonna use our mandrel pliers you could use your round nose pliers I just like my mandrel for this and I'm going to have it cross on the front just to stay consistent <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so I'm going to keep holding on to it, but I don't want to be squeezing it to death because I don't want to be biting through the wire. Grabbing with my bent nose pliers. I'm going to do, there's one wrap. Two wrap. And then, so like how we had talked about before, if you have problems with feeling like it's going to be pokey, just cut at like an extreme angle. So it does make this be pointed. But it's pointed off in the direction that it'll be very, very close to the core wire. And then we can come in with our bent nose pliers and start smooshing down. And so now it's very smooth. Like we could have even filed it further if we wanted, but I don't think we'll have to worry about it. I think that'll be pretty good. So there's that one. Let's zoom back out. get the camera adjusted and now for the other side again we're using the smallest loop on our mandrel and I want to shape that around and travel in the front it just helps uh, if the tiny details are consistently uh, are consistent between the two pieces it helps so much in making the final piece be very symmetrical overall there's one and two and now we're going to snip it on the back and if you over bent a bit you can just hold on and lift it out some give that a snip <clears throat> and smush And so there we are with our own drops and it didn't take any components we could have used head pins but we no way needed to oops and I think that just makes such a nice sleek design and to complete these into earrings we would just take ear hooks again all the tools and materials are listed down in the video description and open that just a bit and hook on our ear hook or our charm to the ear hook 
And then I like to use just a little silicone back and I thread that on there. <clears throat> and I'm going to do that same thing to the other side. And then close it. And whenever I store earrings, like in our inventory, we just put them in like a tackle box because we have an earring display that we'll actually be showing you guys in our next uh, booth tour video. So be sure to subscribe and sign up for our newsletter if you don't want to uh, miss out on that. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I just thread one ear hook through the loop of the other and with the earring backs on there we can put them all into a pile and they'll get a little jumbled and stuff but we won't be losing pairs uh, and then whenever we tag these we actually just put the little tag boop right there we'll go over how we tag our jewelry uh, possibly if y'all are interested in that so that's a pair of earrings very cool okay and up next we are going to be doing a pendant just with thicker wire, just to kind of go over um, how to make a bale for a drop style pendant, which is very, very similar, y'all, to making these earrings. But I didn't want to, uh, <clears throat> my heart is always with the beginners. Um, and just so y'all know, if, if you're a beginner and you feel lost or confused or out of your depth, please send us an email or leave a comment because it's, I can't help unless you ask for help. <laughs> so um, it's, we are 100% here for you guys. So uh, it's very helpful to us if you have a question, if you're able to send a picture about what you have a question of. Um, one of our friends here on the channel had actually sent pictures of their herringbone wrap that they had done after our live stream with like certain parts of it like circled in like text on the picture and it's like I mean they did a really good job if everybody who sent in pictures put that much thought into it our job would be <laughs> so easy but just just a picture and a verbal description can help us so much in being able to be helpful to you so and it doesn't I mean, we appreciate it when people sign up for like our $1 a month Happy Crafter Club and stuff, but that is in no way required. Like you don't have to sign up for anything. You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to nothing except for send us an email and we'll help you out. So uh, we do hope that that is helpful to you guys. So where did my, there it is. So we're going to be using the 18 gauge wire again for the core. I really don't quite recommend using anything uh, you know, I got some 16 gauge over here. I don't recommend using anything thinner than 18 gauge, maybe 20 gauge. Um, but I personally get a whole bunch of warping whenever I use 20 gauge. So it's just something to be mindful of. So this is 16 gauge again from Parawire and this isn't sponsored. We just really, really love Parawire. I've been using them in my work almost exclusively. Um, for over a decade and I've been nothing but happy. Our clients and customers have been nothing but happy. So that's pretty cool. And for the pendant, I'm actually going to snip off about six to eight inches uh, just to give ourselves plenty of space. And uh, I think I'm gonna make the bale Nah, we're not going to make the bale first. We'll do the wrapping first. <laughs> so, and I'm going to be wrapping this with the 16 gauge aluminum. So yeah, you know, you probably could get away with using a 20 gauge core wire. Sorry, sometimes my voice uh, <clears throat> cuts out on me. Um, you could get away with using a 20 gauge core wire if you were using a substantially softer metal. Um, so just experiment and see what works for you because what I like and what works for me may not be what you like best or what works best for you. So experimentation really does keep this stuff spicy. So I've snipped the end and we're going to make our loop same way as before. Now with this aluminum you gotta be real careful because it will, it will um, leave a tooth mark from where the pliers gripped. That's alright though. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna thread that on and these are these three beads I actually uh, handmade here in our home on my uh, Lamport glass torch 
If you guys are interested in seeing more bead making tutorials, let me know because I absolutely love any excuse to play on my torch, even though it still kind of terrifies me. <laughs> so um, just threading that on and then I'm going to shape this around here on the side. Ooh, I just had an idea. Okay, we're going to try something. We're going to experiment. So I'm going to wrap around just the large bead first. And so when it comes down like that, I'm just going to smush. Did you see, see how easy that went? I love this aluminum wire. Um, and then we are going to do a wrap. And again, like you can see how my core wire is just curved because I didn't really bother to straighten it. Um, you really want to bother to straighten it. Um, and then we're just going to bring this up and around. And I think, ooh, okay, I'm going to snip it right here. And so it'll be like we did just one link, like just one wrap. And I'm going to smush it and smush it. Because that's the biggest thing is I just want it hidden behind that wire. And so there's that. And then we can put, I'm just interested to see how this comes out because I have not tried this before, like ever. So, <laughs> okay, we have both of the accent beads added, and then we can come in and make another loop. And I am going to be building off of it in the same way that we were. And I'm going to have it go behind that first wire. Again, I'm just going to come in here and press to get it to be flat up against that bead. <clears throat> yeah, I would not be in here doing that with my fingernail on a 16 gauge copper. I don't care how soft it is. <laughs> just shaping that around. Ooh, I think I love it. Maybe. I don't know. More data is required. So there's two. I'm going to straighten out. And now on this one, we can totally build off to the side as opposed to going behind. It's just all about where you place the wire. And then I'm bracing right here to put that bit of a training bend in it and then bringing it around. And so now coming around there on the side. <clears throat> and now you can always um, do a pendant kind of like a bracelet and have it be in line with the necklace um, or you can have it be like an earring where it's a drop pendant so I really like them like this for horizontal, for like chokers and macrame necklaces and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and do a third layer. And again, you can see it starts to bow out a little bit weird there on the side. To get that to not happen, I'm going to bend down behind. And that kind of helps a little bit. And then just shape it around. So whenever you're looking at your work, don't just be like, oh, it sucks. Like be like, well, what sucks about it? Like, what don't you like about it? And then, well, how could you do that differently? And it's just constructive criticism is what helps you grow as an artist, but just mindless uh unintentional just criticism is useless all like 
if it's not constructive, then what's the point? So I think that's pretty neat. It's very different from what I typically do, but sometimes that can be pretty cool. So I'm going to bind this off. And I'm going to snip just like that because I want this to be able to fall behind the wire. And you could finish the end with like a spiral. You could do all sorts of stuff. Also, I'm going to use my nylon jaw pliers to just make these wires lay where I want them to uh, and get them to be a little bit more shoulder to shoulder. There we go. I think that's very interesting. Again, where that is required. I think I might like it better with a round bead, but as opposed to something quite so oval. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to do that bend about that much because you can always trim some off too. And now I'm going to have it travel up on this side. I just try to pick whichever side has the wire lower and that that's the one that I'm going to have the tail tuck up on. And I am like so scared of stabbing myself now, but I mean, it, we should be okay. So again, ooh, pulling, 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 and we're starting to, I'm going to zoom out so you can see, this is going to be a little bit of a struggle, y'all. Uh, <laughs> everything is okay. There we go. Let me pick up my mess. Let me close my beads. That could have been way more disastrous than it was. Thankful that it's not. So maybe instead of just pulling, we can wiggle. So I am still pulling. There we go. So sometimes just being a little patient and a little problem solving can go a really long way in keeping you from destroying your work area. And there we have that. Like, I think this would be super cute if I did some green lampwork glass, like to where they looked like peas, and did them, did them as like peas in a pod. That'd be super cute. Okay. So now I'm going to bend forward very slightly. And we're going to come in with our mandrel pliers, so you could just as easily use a pen or a knitting needle or a paintbrush handle or anything like that. And I am going to do one and two and three loops for this bale. You could just do two, you could just do one. And I'm gonna kind of angle it over so that the center line of the pendant is in line with the center loop. And then just like how we did for the wrapped loops on the earrings, I'm gonna come through and wrap. There we go. And there we go. And so from here we could totally do like a decorative spiral or we could just snip it off flush. I think we're just going to snip it off flush. So I've opened it back up just a little bit and I'm going to snip. Put that wire into our scrap bin. and smush it down. Now you could leave your bale shoulder to shoulder like how this one is here. <clears throat> or you can insert a dull pocket knife or the jaw of your pliers and it opens it up just a little bit and I really like that. So that is a pendant.
another option for this is instead of doing the bend like how we had done and also if you feel like that's poking well to finish the first thought we could have totally just done a loop like we were doing a bracelet link and hang like some tassels or some chains or some other bead charms or just really anything uh, off the end of this and make it like a really nice like kind of long uh, necklace but if it's pokey and you don't like that I'm gonna get in there and open it up just a bit and now I'm going to use my pliers my round nose pliers and curve that in so now it is nice and flush and I may actually trim off just a little bit more snip so that I can tuck the wire in between the layers. Whoop. There we go. And now we can just take that and smush it in just a bit. And now there's no pokiness. <clears throat> so, so much of wire wrapping is critical thinking and troubleshooting on the fly. Um, so if something's not working out quite the way that you wanted, um, you can figure it out. I have faith in you. Like, again, so long as it's looking, it doesn't even have to look the way that you wanted it to, because there's a lot of stuff that we sell out of our booth and off of our website that is not my favorite thing, but it might be yours. It certainly was the clients. They paid money for it. And who am I to argue with that? Like, <laughs> so, so long as it's holding together and it's comfortable to wear, you did it right. <clears throat> okay so up next we have done earrings we've done bracelet links um doing bracelets on memory wire i like to do the same way that we did on this and then how we scooch it off to the end um and then i'll just make another one and scooch it and then until they're butted together and then do another one and scooch it so they're butted together so um i do have linked down below a not so great tutorial uh i i was learning it was very early in our youtube uh career and but it gives you the idea so if you're ever working on a herringbone and you run out of wire that is the technique that we would use for adding in more wire and i just realized i did it backwards oh my goodness <laughs> Ah, it's fine <laughs> so the next thing we're going to cover um because we still have two more pendant styles uh we're going to be wrapping that one and we're going to be wrapping i lost it there it is this uh botswana agate which is actually from the same bead strand that the original tutorial that i did that was so horrible um it's from it's from that same strand of beads so yay um but let's go ahead and tackle rings really quick so um this is something we're going to be doing with the 20 gauge wire <clears throat> you though i don't know let's see can we use 18 gauge with this oops we can throw it for sure 18 gauge is going to be really stiff though because the herringbone super duper builds itself up so yeah, I'm going to I'm going to tackle 20 gauge. And you will want a ring mandrel for this. If you don't have a ring mandrel, the handle of a cooking like stirring spoon or just something round. Um but really these are a very good investment. And we're going to use ooh 30 to 36 inches of wire uh, quite a bit so like half an arm span on me but you want to give yourself more than what you think you'll need and we're going to start by threading on our bead and this is just a little faceted crystal bead that has like a little flat matte finish front that I think is so cute and I'm going to make this to around a size 9, so I'm going to start at a size 10. And this might actually size it down to about an 8.5. So you'll want to experiment 
for yourself. And then not crossing the wires, I'm just wrapping them around our ring mandrel. And this is going to make the ring band. And again, not crossing them yet. But I'm going to shape this. This is very similar to how we start our simple wire bead pendant or ring. <clears throat> so I've curved it around. I've removed it from the mandrel. And you can use either your fingernails or your pliers to do a little bit of a bend right there. Let's zoom in just a bit for you guys um, to get that wire to sit nice and snug to our bead. And before moving forward, I'm going to do that same thing on the other side. So again, just boop, bending it in a bit. And from here, you can see how that wire sits very snug onto the shoulder of our bead. And I am going to thread through the ring and we just treat this initially like the ring band itself is the center like the core wire and I just want to be very very careful because all the prep work that we put in right now is what's going to help us to get a good result with our bead um later so shaping that around you can do something that i call a training bend which is where i put just a little bit of a bend in the wire <clears throat> and then i start feeding it through and it just it makes sure that the wire it, it doesn't it's not 100 percent every time but it does help sometimes so i'll take it where i can get it and we're just doing that wrap around both sides and I'm going to try to bring this forward just a little bit on our bead because we're we've got to have some place to build to so by doing a smaller there we go I scooched it towards the front and now before we go any further you can see our ring bands all kind of jank so we are going to try to straighten that back out just get things untwisted from each other there we go if you know what size this is going to be, you could hammer it to work harden um, the ring band. So I actually probably should have started it on an 11. But there's no telling how it might stretch back out, so we'll see. And from here, we will proceed as though it's just a regular old herringbone. So I'm just going to shape our wire around. And again, I have this tendency to get like a lump there so I'm just going to straighten that part out make sure it sits nice and snug we can do our train bend if we like I'm going to try it without this time I'm going to try really hard to stay in frame cannot guarantee results <laughs> so bring that around and if the ring band itself starts shifting we can just keep it nice and flat and now from here, I'm going to continue bringing this around again. I want to bring that shoulder in, <clears throat> stacking the wires next to each other. We don't want to be crossing them. There we go. Coming around using our bent nose pliers to keep those ring, sh ring shank, ring band wires. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I gave us way more wire than what we needed. Well, that's okay. And now we're gonna come around. And do another there we go. Because <clears throat> we could have just snipped one of these off, but I do kind of like building around one side and then the other. There we are. Again, keeping that ring band. Let's 
nice and flat because it's easier to <clears throat> control the twisting a little at a time than it's easier to do it a little at a time than to do all of your herringbone weave for the for the ring and then having a very twisted up ring band and trying to deal with it there at the end so coming on down and I think this is going to be my last one on each side just because I'm happy with it. You could continue adding layers, but you can see how it starts kind of building down around the side. And it can actually start shrinking your ring even further. Because the more wire you add, the more space it's going to take up. You know, there on the uh, inner diameter. So there we go. And I think I'm going to finish it with three wraps on each side. So there was one. <clears throat> and if you are making this and you know you want it a specific size and you don't really want to worry about um, resizing it, you could totally uh, continue doing that wrap all of the way down. Again, keep in mind, it's going to take up a significant amount of your inner diameter and can reduce it sometimes two to three ring sizes. Now you can hammer it back out, but that changes the look and the feel. Um, so <clears throat> um, I think I have a ring that I can show. Yeah, this one here is an example of a different style of ring that I had done. Uh, and that's how I resize them is I'll come in with my pliers and do like a key turn and it makes that squiggle on the sides. So that's why I usually leave my rings as just the, just the 20 gauge band. I mean, we sell them for like five bucks. So like five to $10 depending, um, on what's up. So, but that also I can do that and then resize it and stretch that squiggle back out just a little so <clears throat> if you guys have more questions about how to resize uh, adjustable rings let me know and we may do a video just about that um though hmm. so the second version of this that we're going to do is an adjustable ring so uh Hopefully that'll be helpful to you guys. But since I cut so much wire on this, I'm going to go ahead and um, do the wrapped band all the way around just to show that as an option. Also, you could, to you could add in so much variation <clears throat> by using half round wire or square wire and maybe on one of the layers doing some twisting on the square wire. Uh, in Later in this video, I know it's been long already, but there's so much to go over. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna be going over how to add in more wires to do a braid layer that I think would be really cool. You can add in coils or beads, um, just so many different things to really uh, put a lot of character into your wraps. You could make your own polymer clay beads or lamprey glass if you're into that. <clears throat> Torch work can be quite an investment, but it is so much fun. And it, it um, used to, <laughs> memories from on the road, um, you know, it's, the spiel would be when people would walk up to the table, they would trigger our NPC dialogue, which is, if for anybody who plays video games, that's the non-player character. So it, it would be like the merchant, like, you know, you arrive in the village in the RPG game and, you know, they're like, greetings, traveler, um, kind of stuff. So, you know, uh, people would walk up and we'd be like, hey, you know, how you doing? <coughs> Excuse me. And then, um. I mean, like everything here is handmade if you have any questions feel free to ask um just to kind of get a conversation going uh and 
<laughs> sometimes we'd get folks who were like, well, did you make, did you make this? And they'd be like pointing at like the display or, um, like the lobster claw clasp of a bracelet or they'd just find something and be like, well, did you make the wire? <laughs> Oops, I my pliers. Um, and so it's, I like being snarky back when people are snarky. And so now when they're like, do you make the beads? It's like, yeah, bruh, I did. <laughs> and then give them our card and send them to our YouTube so they can learn how to do it too. But, um, but I don't know, is <laughs> it shuts them up real quick when you're like, yeah, I did make that clasp. <laughs> Keeping all of the rude profanities inside. And we're just going to continue <clears throat> looping around. And having said that, it is in no way, no way required for you to make your own beads, make your own clasps. Like, that's not like uh, gatekeeping the cool kid club. Like, you don't have to. <laughs> Like, you can buy your clasps, you can buy your ear hooks. Anybody who tries to make you feel small for purchasing something instead of, you know, smelting the, you know, the copper from the earth yourself and drawing it out into why it's like, don't let anybody stand on you or make you feel small about your work. This is your art for your joy, for you to share at your discretion with the rest of the world. If anybody's going to crap on that, that's, an, that's a them issue. <clears throat> So, yeah, it just, I, it really frustrates me whenever folks try to make other folks feel small. Because <sighs> it's so counterproductive, too. Like, giving everything away for free here on our YouTube channel. And I say that, but, we, I mean, we do monetize our videos and we have our shameless self-promotion and stuff. So it's not like I'm you know, it, I'm not just doing this out of the goodness of my heart. I'm finding ways of paying my bills for it too, but it really does inspire me to, to, to give everything that I've ever learned and ever thought of away for free to you guys, because oftentimes the ideas and just the conversations that get started and the amazing people that we've gotten to meet over, <clears throat> over all these years, like decades now, um, well, a solid decade at least. We posted our first tutorial back in 2012, and we've been vending since 2008, so it's it's racking up <laughs> some mileage. Um, has inspired us so much. Like, I've learned more from y'all than I think I'll ever be able to teach in a lifetime. So thank you guys for being here and for taking the time to send us emails and write us comments and, you know, just... It, not to brag, but I think we have one of the best communities on YouTube, and that's all on y'all. Like, I was just here, y'all showed up and made it amazing, so thank you. Gushing over for now. My fingers hurt. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep, I love it whenever it gets short here at the end, and we can just twist it like that. Okay. And so we are going to smush that end down. Yeah, there's no chance that this is going to fit me anymore. But we'll see what we can do. And I'm just going to start wrapping from the other side. And this is a great way that if you or a client is very hard on your jewelry, um, this is definitely beefing up the band so that it can hold up to a whole lot more, hopefully, in theory. <clears throat> and we're just going to continue whip stitching through and I haven't done any sort of annealing or anything like that uh oh the wire got crossed somewhere whoopsie well, we'll just pretend like it didn't <clears throat> um, I don't do any tor torch work on enameled wire because it just demolishes the enamel and it brings it back down to just being copper again um but <clears throat> uh the wire is so soft and supple i haven't really needed to anneal and we are just gonna keep bringing the wire through and i do try to move this part of the wire as little as possible that way i'm not work hardening that part um like, 
I'm mostly, it's all happening here in the inch or two uh, closest to what's being wrapped. So by not running it all through my fingers every single time, that's just going to work hard in it. And so I don't mind if it gets a little crunkly and weird looking. Um, because it's going to get crunkly and weird looking. But I don't need to straighten it every time because <clears throat> that makes it get even more crunkly and less easy to work with, if that makes sense. This is also if you're wrapping with aluminum. I would definitely take the time to do this step because it would still be quite um, soft if you used aluminum for the ring band. And we're getting close to being able to fit that last little bit of wire all butted up. <clears throat> okay. So let's see, we're gonna do a zoom. So you can see that's where we snipped before. And I'm gonna try to snip <clears throat> so that, oh, excuse me, so that they'll, I've snipped hopefully so that the wires will butt their butts together. <laughs> My butt to your butt. Um, yeah, because you don't want any little pokey bits. I mean, there's gonna be a thing, like a little bit going on, but if you can get it to be as smushed and as little as possible, then it won't snag anything. Oh, didn't mean to go out of frame. And now you can see we're all gnarled and weird and lumpy, and that's okay. Because we are going to put this onto our ring mitt. Yeah, it's a size 7 now. <laughs> um... Again, tools are linked down below. This is a 13 ounce <clears throat> jeweler's hammer that has heads that we can swap out, which I love because, oops, because whenever this gets all marred up like how it is, I should be able to get <clears throat> a fresh head for it. And then it just screws back on. This is probably my favorite hammer because it came with so many different textures. Okay, possibly loud noises, but what we're going to do is, with the nylon side, I'm going to come through, and I'm just hammering. And you can see, already that's expanded it to a size 8 now. <clears throat> and this is serving to work harden as well as reshape our wire. And now I can come through, you'll wanna be careful, since there's so many layers of wire here, if we hammer it with the metal head, <clears throat> there's a risk of us pinching the wire through itself. So use sparingly and check often. But man, it really does the job. Normally, I would have this propped against my jewelry desk and it wouldn't be bouncing around everywhere. But I'm trying to have it be as not loud as possible. There you go. And that is down to an eight and a half. And I think, I mean, that's reasonable. And, oh, that actually feels really nice. That's how the band looks. My hands are cold, so they're shrunk, so it actually fits. Normally I wear a size 9. Not, not quite on that one and not quite on that one. But over here on the ring finger, it's doing good. Um, but yeah, that's, oh, that's so pretty. I love that. Booyah. So now we get to do it again, but in a way that is adjustable. So we are going to take <clears throat> the 20 gauge wire again. And I'm going to pull off about 16 inches of it. And I'm just going to thread it on. Okay. 
and depending on the size that you want your ring so let's make it a size 11 to start to, to start with because we're going to make this adjustable so I am taking this and just here on the back side oh excuse me here on the back side of our mantle I'm just pressing with my finger and shaping a curve and we can refine this here in a moment but we want to shape it around like that and then we can bring it in a little tighter if since we want and then we're actually going to take this and straighten it back out so I'm holding it by both of the loops and I'm just going to straighten it <clears throat> and well I could have gone in opposite directions I guess so I'm actually going to take it like this and twist one of them the other way. Um, <clears throat> and you can see here that's starting to make like a little swirly bit. So from here we're going to wrap very similarly to how we did on the ring. So I'm just bringing it around. <clears throat> there we go. around like that and we want this to be in the center if it's not perfect that's okay and then bring that around <clears throat> and now we can do that herringbone wrap just like that coming around to this side and wrap just like that oh and my ends aren't even either this is going <clears throat> all sorts of weird but from here, we can take our wire and continue stacking. So there's one. And then bring this around. Again, just maintaining that same pattern and shape. And I'm going to do this one really messy to make it very, very organic. So it's very off-center, very skewed and shaped, and I kind of love it. <clears throat> Excuse me. There we go. Wrapping again. Then, so this will give us three on each side, but it doesn't quite look even, does it? No, that's all right. So I'm going to do a second loop around to stabilize here on the side. Same thing on the other side of the ring. <clears throat> and this one here is about a fingertip width and a quarter. So about an inch. So I'm going to snip the other side to match. I usually always go with just whatever the length of the shorter side is. I'll make the other side match that <clears throat> and then start coming in with our spirals, which our last master class went over spirals in depth. So whichever style of spiral you prefer, I'm going to do this one as a very tight spiral. Just because I find that the very airy, organic looking spirals kind of get snagged on stuff more as finger rings, especially when I have my long curly hair. Um, it's just an endless struggle with just getting my rings tangled in my hair. So I'm going to come through with our nylon gel pliers <clears throat> and spiral that in so we can give it a bit of a smoosh. Same thing on the other side. And again, if you're having trouble with your spirals, I highly recommend checking out Wire Wrapping Lesson 4. <clears throat> and just practice, practice, practice. Patience, persistence, and practice. <laughs> so there's that. And even that, I think, is just super cute by itself. And now we're just going to shape this around into a ring. <clears throat> so starting at a size 10 
and just pressing around to shape everything around the spirals the wire <clears throat> and from here we can use the nylon head to work harden this into its shape you could have used an 18 or a 16 gauge to do this to try to keep it very um very substantial that's just if you want so to make this size down i'd actually come up on the ring mandrel we always take a ring mandrel with us to uh oh i'm not even in frame <clears throat> we always take a ring mandrel with us to vending events so that we can resize rings for folks and just like that you have an adjustable ring band it's not my favorite i'm not a huge fan of adjustable stuff um but that's just me you can also have the wires overlap each other that is perfectly fine like for me personally um if i were sizing this down um, I'd do a little bit of coil on either side, and that would actually give us some room to do some contracting or expanding. I'll have to explore that more. The hand is coming in. Ooh, that's a little snug. <laughs> so we will open it up just a bit. <clears throat> But yeah, to do that coiling, I would recommend either some half round wire or some 26 gauge. If I were using half round, I'd use 18 uh, gauge half round. That feels pretty good. And I'd actually flip it over because I like that shape. I guess it sits that way either way, doesn't it? <clears throat> but yeah, how it's kind of just at a bit of an odd angle. There we go. I like it better on my right hand. Okay, so the core wire that I'm going to use for this next pendant is going to be, well, I want it to be as thick as it will can possibly be to fit it through um, the bead. Like, so I'm able to fit a 16 gauge. Oh, most beads, I'd have trouble fitting an 18 gauge. So just the thickest I can go that I have in stock. Um, and I'm going to give us way more than what we need. <clears throat> so this is two, three, four, five, five or six inches of wire, just because I'd rather have a little bit more than a little too, a little not enough. <laughs> Um, I'm going to tidy up my pliers just real quick, or, or just throw them. <laughs> oh, it's pure chaos over here. That's fine. Um, there we go. Sorry, I didn't mean to make that noise in your ear. <clears throat> just kind of strategically scared stuff. That quick. <laughs> Voila, it's clean. So, we have the 16 gauge core wire and I think we're going to do our wrapping with 18 gauge just because uh, I'd like this to look a little bit more substantial I am going to use my nylon jaw pliers to smooth this wire out now that does work hard in it but I'm accepting that uh, and ooh, it's already snipped flat I am going to make that same loop that we have been making and I make this loop very much like a P, as opposed to, like, I don't want it centered up. I want it to be very offset to one side. And this is another opportunity for me to use my mandrel pliers. I'm going to use the largest barrel of it just to get that curve started, because I, it's not as large as the bead that I'm going to be using, but I just want to get that curve started. So we'll thread on our wire and then thread on our bead. And I'm placing the bead there in the center of our wire. And I want this to come in very nice and snug. So I'm gonna try 
so we've got zoomed in just a little and I am going to the 18 gauge can be a little bit of a challenge but you can do it just be patient with yourself be patient with the pro project okay so we got that shaped around and then coming around this way I'm gonna start with just doing three repetitions of the herringbone just because I think it looks so pretty like I don't know why three is just a nice round number for herringbone for me stacking it below the next level or below the first layer rather and bringing it around town yeah the 18 gauge is significantly more challenging but that's okay I'm gonna use you can use any pliers really to just smush that down oh, that hurt to keep those wraps kind of snugged up to each other bring in that around and then that's two on both sides let's go ahead and do that third layer and I am just working off the spool I don't think I mentioned that um, <laughs> until just now but it's I never know how much wire I'm going to be using um, so I just it's a little clunky having the spool off to the side um, <clears throat> Now for earrings, I think I use about 10 inches and I have some left over to give you an idea for a 10 millimeter bead to make one earring. So th this project kind of eats the wire, but it's so pretty. <laughs> like whenever, I, whenever I, I was learning to wire wrap, um, this was before there were really any YouTube videos about it or anything, so it was a whole lot of trial and error. Um, I was very grateful to JewelryLessons.com that, I don't think I pronounced her name correctly, but any Okin, any Okin, um, her tutorials were a godsend. <laughs> like, they were so helpful in just learning things, but I didn't have any money, you guys. Like, and, and so whenever you're starting out a business and you're broke and it's like, do I buy beads or do I buy food or do I buy a tutorial? Um, and so it was just a whole lot of trial and error, but learning how to make like a uh, bead alon like I'd gotten, oh, let me grab it. This isn't sponsored or anything. This is just my very, this was the very first book that I got on making jewelry. Um, and it was so helpful in the first wire work that I learned how to do, page 103. But this was so, still is so, so handy. But it was learning how to do <clears throat> wrapped loops. I talked about tools. Oh, I haven't opened up this book in a million years, it feels like. <laughs> yeah, just that little bit. It was enough to get me started. Um, and then it goes into beaded finishings. <laughs> but I showed how to make a wrapped loop. And so it's, I didn't really feel like a wire wrapper. Um, like I was still just bumping into things. Um, herringbone made me feel like a wire wrapper. Like I felt fancy. So it really, it made me feel like I had leveled up and like I did like, um, it was the first time anyone who was kind of witnessing my crafting journey, uh, <clears throat> and not that, I mean, they still don't take me seriously. <laughs> my family still doesn't take me seriously. Um, for the most part, like some of them are like, yeah, I guess this is a job, <laughs> but like everybody was like, when are you going to quit fooling around and just get a job? And I was like, no, my dreams. And they were like, but you broke. And I'm like, so are you <laughs> like, anyway, how is, cause it, there were, oh, okay. The, the town that we lived in has a factory and that's it. And they lay you off seasonally. And that's like back then that was the only place to work. And it was like 45 minute drive to the next town over where there were any jobs that were you know, worth traveling for. Um, and our, our truck couldn't make the trip. So it's like, we were kind of stuck. Um, and we were like, you know, trying to make ends meet and ends weren't meeting. And we were like, well, 
if we're if we're gonna be broke if we're gonna be poor because we never felt poor we just felt broke all the time like but we knew that if we if we buckled down and worked really really hard maybe we'd be less broke um and then i discovered beads <laughs> and i haven't had money since um not for long anyway uh but we were like well if we're gonna be broke let's be broke for ourselves instead of being broke for somebody else um but herringbone to get back to my original point was the first time that <clears throat> anybody looked at what I was doing and was like you know you this might this might be a thing and I was like yeah I know that's what I'm trying to do but I can see why nobody took me seriously when I was making necklaces out of acorns and dental floss but we all start somewhere you guys we all start somewhere oh I'm not gonna snip it off yet but we finished up our third wrap on this one but yeah herringbone like they they were impressed the, uh, not that you should ever, you know, craft to impress anyone other than yourself. Um, but it was the first time anybody had taken me, even a modicum of someone taking me seriously. You know, because I was a kid, anyhow. Like, nobody takes 17, 18 year olds seriously. So, for our next layer, <clears throat> I am actually going to pull off 36 more inches. And I've zoomed out way far, so hopefully you can see what it is that I'm doing. And now I'm going to be using this 26 gauge. And I'm pulling off an arm span of it, which is I just grab one end and then the other and then make my arms go as wide open as they can. So it's a very rough estimate. It's probably about five to six feet of wire. Um, and... I'm going to toss most of it just off to the side of me, and I'm going to come here now to the end of my wire, and we're going to start coiling. <clears throat> Which, the way that coiling looks is, I'm going to zoom out just a hair farther. Just let me shake the tripod first. Um, I have about a, an inch of tail wire here, and I'm just gripping, and you can coil this away. Or you could coil where you're coiling towards you. It doesn't matter. You get the, just however comes naturally to you, do that. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, I'm not going to count every single coil, but about every ten, I do like to give it a smush. You just want to make sure that you're not coiling over your own work. That kind of ruins the effect a little bit but I'm kind of trying to go for like a guitar string look and I always get folks on all of our tutorials that have any sort of coiling there's always somebody who's like well why don't you just use a drill and my answer for that is because this is still attached to the other end and it would be going absolutely bonkers if I had this attached into a drill and I just whenever I'm at vending events or craft shows or you know crafting in the car I don't have a drill on me so it's a really good idea um, I don't have anything against drills um, I just think it's a really good idea to build up your foundation techniques so that you can still do coils without having a drill Whoop. <clears throat> and then that way whenever you do have a drill when you do have access to it and it's you know if we were just doing a core wire with the coil on it without the rest of the project attached yeah you can totally do this in a drill <clears throat> but also while drills go faster they also mess up faster <laughs> and i've wasted a whole lot of wire trying to get decent at making coils on a drill so if you've got like a super cheap drill that doesn't have very good speed control <clears throat> that can be really frustrating so I'm just coming in, trying to smush down. Now that we have a little bit of wire on there, um, I want to wrap the tail down and give it a smush because there's no sense in wasting anything. And then I'm just going to keep wandering out of frame and doing those wraps. So to go nice and slow. And this is how it starts, you guys. You start super mega slow. <clears throat> excuse me and then as you build up your muscle memory and your wire brain coordination you can pick up speed so we are just going to continue coiling 
And I like to work here at the end of my wire as much as possible because that way I'm only gripping and crunching up this end. Because where I grip with my hand, you can actually see my little finger indents from where I'm gripping. But we can coil. <clears throat> I'm so, so sorry. Well, rather, instead of apologizing for being ill, I'm going to thank you guys again <clears throat> for being here and listening to me clear my throat in your ear. Like, I've had to stop quite a few times. Basically, every single time there's a blur cut, I've had to stop to have a coughing fit. Um, one day I'll get to take a day off. Today is not that day. <clears throat> and, like, I feel fine as long as I don't, like, talk or breathe. But... It is what it is. And I've eaten so much honey that, like, my blood sugar, <laughs> my eyes are dilated, my hands are shaking. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, <clears throat> it is what it is. It's inconvenient at worst, so I'm probably just complaining more about it than what it's due. So here you can see, haha, this is why I do it real time, is because for problems to surface, because they will. Right now, this just looks like a loop, but if we kept going, it would get tighter and tighter and tighter <clears throat> until it becomes a kink in the wire, which actually weakens the wire and like it makes it not smooth anymore and it's just problematic. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, periodically, like every 50 coils or so, I just check the full length of my wire and make sure I'm not tangled on anything. And then just smush and continue on. Because and it can be really tempting to want to go foomp, 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 like coiling really wide. I'm going to zoom in for this one. It can be very tempting to coil wide and just smush down. But it well, actually worked really well. <laughs> Not a good example. Um, <clears throat> so to coil really wide and then smush. There we go. It starts, if your coiling looks like that, it's not the end of the world. We can take this and using our bent nose pliers, I'm going to start at where the lumpiness begins and just start cinching down on the wire. <clears throat> now you have to be careful because this can sometimes cut through the wire. I mean, it is just 26 gauge. You don't want to put too much pressure on it. Um, but yeah, you can cinch it down and kind of smush it a little bit, but it still doesn't look quite as smooth as <clears throat> if you're just very, very mindful and go slow and steady, take as many breaks as you need to, but the quality of your work will shine through as you get those coils sitting as close to shoulder to shoulder. You can see it's not perfect but it tightens down much more cleanly <clears throat> than that rough spot in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, and there I am making a kink in the wire. That's not a full on kink yet, but it's almost there. Alrighty. So we're going to zoom back out. And now I'm going to grab this wire with my pliers, it could be any pair of pliers, and at the back end of the coil, I'm gonna start dragging my fingers down just loosely until it starts sliding all the way down. Because now we're right here and we can actually lift up just a bit. I just wanna make enough space that we can get that coil down there we go to make it look like it started way off over here. <clears throat> and I think that that can help tremendously in our next step, which is building out that frame. And so we're gonna wrap around, <clears throat> excuse me, there we go. And now from here, and this is what I wanted to demonstrate. Normally I would have measured 
and been like, okay, so we need this much coiling before we even consider sliding this down, just because it's way more inconvenient to have to do our coiling this far up with all this wire off to the side. But it's not the end of the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like this is a totally manageable obstacle. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna coil in very loosely. Oh, I guess that video is done exporting. Um, it's been a very busy day in the studio. <clears throat> Trying to get all sorts of stuff done. We've been doing uh, vlog videos and all sorts of stuff. But now it's much, much shorter. And it does take a larger hand motion, but you can still function around that wire. And I'll often incorporate this for whenever I'm doing weaving as well, which we will be doing on this piece. So we're going to do just a few more. And I have it very zoomed out so you can really see how my hands are moving in relation to each other. <clears throat> Checking always for a good smush and to make sure that I have not messed up or over... It, I'm going to do about another four to five millimeters. <clears throat> just because I want there to be enough wire that it hides and then stops there on the back. And I'll show you a close-up of that here in just a moment. Okay, so that was another 10, and I think that got us right where we're going. So now we'll come around. And actually, I don't mind it going a little bit further because for the next wrap that we're doing, <clears throat> the next layer on this pendant is more herringbone. And I'll show you, it's like herringbone section. Okay, coming around. There we go. So now from here, what we're about to do is very similar in concept to <clears throat> um, if we were making herringbone on a memory wire. And I do want to make sure that I am not warping our core wire out of alignment. So I'm going to actually uncur uncurl all of this wire. <clears throat> We could do, it's going to be cumbersome, but it is what it is. Oh, I'm just making a mess. I'm going to go ahead and put all of those, I'm just taking the beads off of their wire. I'll finish the bracelet later tonight, I think. <clears throat> and then I'm going to maybe do this. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard for me to do stuff left-handed. I can only imagine the frustration of all of our left-handed folks who are uh, watching, who are like, how did you do that? The best tip that I've heard is to watch the video in a mirror, which sounds like wizard work, but that's fine. Okay, so I mostly just have this unwound so that I can um, thread beads on. And I think I'm going to do this with, let's do some brass beads. Get a little bit of color contrast going on here. Here, I'll, let me rummage. So here we have some like enameled iron beads that I've had pretty decent results with. Like, I mean, they're not sterling silver and they're not pear copper, but they also don't irritate my skin. And I haven't had any problems with them turning me green, but everybody's skin has different acidities. People expose their jewelry to different sort of stuff all the time. So uh, use your own discretion. Um, if you don't like metal beads, glass seed beads are wonderful. Or... Um, 
oh, what you call them, gemstones are a perfect option for this. And I think I'm going to use just the four millimeter. And so I'm just gonna grab a pinch out of here and put them into, this is like a little cap to bead organizers like this, but <laughs> should have guessed it. Um, not all of them are compatible with each other. Like not all lids match all the bases, match all the brands. So sometimes whenever I have a rogue cap or a rogue bottom, I'll just use them not for, uh, I'll use them for temporary bead storage. Okay, so I'm gonna thread on probably way more than what I actually need. So let's see, there's one, <clears throat> two, three. I don't imagine myself needing more than 12. So I wanna start with like seven because I can always add more on on the other side. And just in case something goes wrong, it's not quite so many beads to have to chase down. There we go. And now I'm just going to spool this back up. I try to do a very loose spool. I don't like using the very small cards that make you like uh, wrap your wire quite firmly on it because I feel like that just um, oh, overwork hardens my work. I probably have a clip or something that I can use, but just in case, I don't want to lose any beads off the end, so I'm just going to fold over the tip like that. Okay, and now from here, I'm going to do just a few more coils, because I want to extend it enough. So there's seven coils, and I'm going to give it a smush. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more for you guys. Okay, and now from here, you could totally, a, a 24 gauge, I think, would work really, really well for this. And I'm just setting some of my tools out of the way. <clears throat> so we'll scooch our bead up, just one of them, and wrap in that same herringbone fashion, but with our 26 gauge wire. So there's a wrap and bringing it around onto the other side. Now the thing with, with this is I always feel like it makes one side just a little bit thicker than the other. And again, I think I'm just going to do three. And this is where, especially with the thin wire, you want to make for certain that it is stacked behind the layer in, like behind the first layer that you laid down and you can totally use your fingernails or your the pads of your fingers just whatever serves you best to hold that wire in place until you get it cinched so then we're coming around the other side and there we go just holding that down and then I'm wrapping Now, that's two wires on each side. And then we'll wrap around. And again, I'm using my fingernail to hold that wire down. There's three on that side. Oh, I'm loving how that looks. And then... There we go. Coming around. And now we face, ah, uh, we could snip the wire, like we could bind it off and snip it, but I'm actually going to travel up the back side like this, coming across, just like that where I am then going to do five more coils, I think. So there's one, 
two, three, four, and five. And then we'll give it a smush. There we go. <clears throat> and so if you pretended like this wire were memory wire, this is exactly how I do um, that. Uh, do a herring, an inline herringbone on memory wire. Let's get that other bead out the way. And then we're just going to repeat this. So coming in, bending around to do that, the herringbone lock. And a lot of the hand motion that I'm doing is to try to keep it very much in frame. Um, so if you're not moving your hands in the same way as what I am, that's okay. And so coming around, keeping that behind. Then bringing it around. Some folks have an easier time uh, moving the main part of the piece. I think I have an easier time. I don't know if I think about it real hard. I get confused and I'm like, wait, how do, how do I like doing it better? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think I prefer to move it and then position the wire. So there's the third layer on this one. And then we're going to come through and stack the third layer behind on that one. Then bring it around. Whoop, wandered out of frame, sorry. And travel it up the back side. Okay, so I continued around um, off camera until we got to what looks like will take us all the way around. And again, we want to maintain that herringbone patterning of making sure that we're keeping our crossover, like our herringbone knocks where it goes around, um, <clears throat> consistently on the same side of the wire. And I'm gonna do about, I think 20, I did the five, to have gotten it started on the next one, and I'm gonna do 20 more. Three, bump in the camera, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Actually, let's start with that and see how far that gets us around. And we can angle these to see to make sure that the herringbone stay positioned the way that we want. I'm gonna have them positioned just a little farther back. There we go. Yeah, we're definitely going to need, I think, at least 10 more. So there's one, two, so the 20 was correct. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then give it a smoosh. <clears throat> yeah, bringing that in nice and tight there on the side, I think will be lovely. And then from here, we can do a few more coils. One, two, three, four, five. And you can see we only have about a foot of wire left. <clears throat> I think we should be able to... Yes, that's the correct direction. We should be, we should be able to do at least one herringbone. And so I'm going to do that and show you how to splice in more wire because it, it would be better um for me to just snip at about like here and then do 10 coils and smush them back and get them to like kind of line up or to splice new wire in <clears throat> so yeah keep an eye on your your wire because i think that's what we're going to go ahead and do is um i'm going to undo the last 10 Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Pardon me. <clears throat> and then, oh, there's my wire snips. 
and I'll show you how to splice in new wires. So we're actually going to backtrack a little bit um, as well. So I'm just going to, yeah, there we go, snip right there, put this off into my scrap bin. Little bits of thin wire like that are perfect for measuring around stones or um, tacking other things into place. I'm going to pull off another two arm spans um, because, so about 10 feet of the 26 gauge wire, um, because we're going to be do some, doing some weaving on the next um, Mm, we might. We'll see. I don't know if we're going to be doing, doing any weaving on the next uh, piece, but it might look... Because we may just finish this with that. <clears throat> but I'd always rather have more wire to decide later. Now, if you wrap this way, like we're from the front to the back, typically, like whichever way it is that you consistently wrap, keep wrapping in that direction. I've just backed up a few stitches, like a few coils, and I am going to splice in the wire, and what I mean by that is you can make the wire nestle in between itself. It's like merging two slinkies, almost. And so I'm just wrapping around and you can see how that wire starts to just nestle in between the other wires that are there. Yep, just like that. And now you'll want to be careful to avoid crossing over too many. It's really one little coil at a time. <clears throat> and I always try to at least splice five to ten coils of overlap um, just so that I can tug on it and it's not going to unravel. I'm just maintaining your pressure. And we could have just done another coil and butted them up together, but I feel like this gets a much more even, <clears throat> uh, the even spacing of the coiling. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to snip and then smush that tail wire down in line with the other coils. <clears throat> and coil, zooming back out. Coil, coil, oop. <clears throat> coil, let's get that a good smush. Travel this back around. And now we can continue on as though nothing ever happened. Check for pokey bits. Looks good, well, feels good. And from here, yeah, let's go ahead and do just a few more. Two. Three. <clears throat> I'm going to drag that bead up. And we continue doing that wrap tearing bow. Now, I will probably do separate tutorials. Like, I want to do a pair of hoop earrings that are this wrapped herringbone. I think that would be really, really cool. Um, so we will cover um, some of these techniques again, just because I know that um, not everyone interested in wire wrapping is going to watch these master classes, um, if only because they're very long classes. But y'all, like, I can't reiterate enough. There's a reason 
why, you know, whenever you go to university or something, or you're going to school to learn something, it's not a five minutes craft channel. Like, <laughs> um, you want to absorb the information. I want to try to teach the content in at least a couple of different ways. That way, um, if one of them doesn't click with you, another might. And it's just, sometimes it takes an hour or two or even three uh, for me to feel like I've fully teached. And as a teacher, all I can do is try my best. And so this is me trying my best. And I do hope that it's helpful to you guys. But I also do acknowledge and respect that a three hour tutorial is not everybody's cup of tea. And so we will probably, we will always keep our older tutorials up, no matter if they were filmed with a potato or if I stayed out of frame the whole time, we still leave it up. Um, because you never know, it might be helpful to somebody. Y'all watching one of my older tutorials or even one of my newer ones where I am just really crappy <laughs> at staying in frame might give you the hope and faith. Well, first off, it proves that I am human and we all mess up on this stuff. It doesn't matter how much... Uh, we've been doing it. It doesn't matter anything. Like we, we're all just you know people here. Um, it might give you the courage to you know maybe you want to start a channel. Maybe you want to you know help people with what you've learned. You know who knows. <clears throat> Ooh, oh, I like that one. And then we're going to do four, if not five more, because this I, I think I'm going to do five across this because I want this to look like an eye and so that top part could be the lid and I think that that would just be really really cool so I, I don't know if I ever said my point but that's um we will be doing more to herringbone tutorials in shorter tutorial format in the future um but right now it's in my heart to do these master classes and i'm enjoying the heck out of them so i'm going to keep at it <clears throat> if y'all have any requests for what you would like future um tutorials to be about future master classes uh, i am very very open to requests uh, I am going to highly recommend uh, CSL Designs and Oxana Crafts and Mithril Arts and Imbali Crafts and I mean there's so so many very good artisan educators here on YouTube. Uh, Go Meow Creations for metal smithing, um, Aussie Mail for chain mail, like I cannot even list like even a fraction of them you guys. like. And go and check out their tutorials because they're amazing especially uh, I'm gonna recommend to beginners um, CSL designs and Oxana crafts because they have some of the best tutorials out there on how to set a cabochon that has not been drilled most of my tutorials uh, seem to be about like groovy cabs or maybe stuff that's a little bit more intricate with the weaving whereas Oxana's very sleek minimalist style is very challenging to me um, but it can seem less intimidating to beginners um, so that's where I always when because I do get requests for folks to be like we'll make a tutorial you know about that and I'm like genuinely I'd just be remaking what Oxana has already done perfectly so except in the few instances where I felt like I actually had something to contribute um I just point people at her tutorials because they're amazing um well that bead's gone forever I'll just grab another one and we were gonna do five beads across the top now that being said, if you have a specific request for how to wrap a certain shape or maybe how to wrap with a certain gauge or with a certain like inclusion of maybe a very particular type of bead, like I'm still, you know, I'm not dismissing anybody's requests. Like I'll still, I'll still make a video about it, <laughs> but uh, just be sure to check out um, those other folks as well because... Uh, from an educational perspective, you'd, you'd be doing yourself a disservice not to check them out. I just feel so lucky to live in the age of YouTube where we can just... Oh, I didn't even do the... Whoopsie. I didn't do the... the uh, 
grounding knot, like the lock stitch. And so it just, boop, lifts up. So that's okay. We'll undo it. Straighten that wire out. I'm just running my finger nail on it to get it to um, be smooth again. There's that. Coming around. Because currently I'm expanding a little bit more into metal smithing because I really, really want to be less terrible at that. Um, and I cannot, like, I'm so glad. <laughs> YouTube University is a thing. Um, so. Coming around. There we go. Doing another. And I do apologize, um, I, again, for wandering out of frame. When I'm at a five times zoom right now, and if anybody's super mad that I keep going out of frame, before you write a snarky comment about it, just just sit down and try it. <laughs> try to wire wrap for how many hours have we been recording today? Um, <laughs> and try to stay perfectly in frame. Like, put on my shoes before you yell at me. The struggle is real, though. There we go. Coming around. And I just, doing that cross on the back like that was the biggest game changer. Because I felt like I was spending so much time snipping and restarting my wire. But to just do that little crossover just seemed to work out perfectly okay so we're gonna go one whoop, two three four and five and swish I'm gonna zoom back out just a bit <clears throat> So sometimes with pieces, it can be, the trickiest part can be knowing when to stop. And I think I'm going to have this be the last layer on this piece. So I'm going to do the next two beads off camera, and then I'm going to meet you guys back here in just the blink of an eye to get this polished off. So I have finished it off with 15 coils. And I am going to go ahead and snip that and then smush it. That way there's no little pokey bit. And the way that I smush, you guys, let's get a close up on this, is I put my pliers over the tip and then I just, squeezing very gently, burnish it in the same direction that the coil's going. And that cinches it down just a little bit and it gets that tip of the wire very very close it's not perfectly joined because it's not like soldered or welded or anything um but it's enough that whenever we come around and encircle our core wire it's now It's now positioned in a way that it's not going to be poking or snagging. And if it is, you can come in and snag it with your fingernail. Lift up and out just a bit. And then let's give that a snip so that the end of that wire is going to be trapped. And now there's no pokey bit because the end is pinned between these two core wires. And so from there, we've got, or we have, all of this wire coming off the sides. We have all of this wire coming down. I'm going to try to do something a little, like, Illuminati looking. Um, I'm going to snip our 18 gauge that was our weaving wire. And that's quite a bit of it, so I'm actually going to 
<clears throat> set that off to the side. And then I'm going to smush that so there's no pokey bits. And we could do a bead on either end. So I don't know if that's going to be a fantastic idea, but we'll try it. Hmm. Actually, I don't think we will. But know that it's an option. It's just, if I had a little bit longer of a core wire, yeah, I'd totally go that route. So instead, I'm going to come in very, very close with my flat nose pliers. And I want these ends straight, like crispy very very precise if we can <clears throat> so not just that but we'll work hardening as well because we're not going to have much opportunity to get these perfectly straight and nice as much as possible once we do what we're fixing to do so yep Grasping with our flat nose pliers and bending up and in to where it's a little bit of like a triangle. And then here on the other side, we will grasp it and bend it up and in. <clears throat> and we can start pressing that just a little bit. It's, you could do that. We could, like, I was thinking about making some loops. I'll actually show you what I was thinking. Just grabbing with my mandrel pliers and looping around one way. And then grabbing my mandrel pliers. Let's actually flat that tip. There we go. <clears throat> Oops. This is another reason why I love these mandrel pliers because it helps me so much in making consistently sized loops. But we could take that and we could wire wrap them together. We could take that and we could overlap them and put a ring through right there and have that hang as a pendant. We could have done some coiling up and down the sides of them if we wanted. <clears throat> we could have, if they had been longer, we could have it be um, a higher domed triangle, like the tip would be maybe here instead of where it is, and we could hang a charm inside of it. We could have made a little tree of life coming up. There's infinite, infinite possibilities, you guys. Um, but I think something that I might do that's a little bit more simplistic or just a different style, really, not even more simplistic, just different. <clears throat> Snipping both of those loops off. Let's come in. And we can just make little spirals. <clears throat> <clears throat> there we go. Oh, wandering out of frame. And just spiraling in there on the sides. Uh, <clears throat> just to conceal the ends. Oops. Pliers slip. That's okay. You could also do decorative spiral elements on the front if you like that. But I just wanted to conceal the wire there on the back. And then we can put a ring right here or attach a bale or something of the sort. We could even, uh, I did in four on both sides if I wanted to hang it vertically this way. <clears throat> but this is pretty close to the original from that tutorial. I think in the tutorial I had done an additional row and just put straight beads on it, like one millimeter crimp beads um, to give it a little bit of a textured look. And again, you could just build and build and build and make this. This could be a huge medallion statement piece, depending on the beads that you used. It could be a sun catcher. The, uh, there is no limit to where you could go with this. There's something pokey, though. 
I think that's where we spliced our wire in. So I'm just poking and moving stuff in around with my fingernail. Until there's no pokey bits. <clears throat> when in doubt, smush it out. So a style of bale that I really like that I think we covered last lesson, but we'll go over again, is I'm going to pull off about six inches of 16 gauge wire and then using my mandrel pliers I want there to be enough room that this can move freely but it's not going to be slip sliding every which way um, in between like I want it to fit comfortably right here but I don't want it to be able to slide between the different beads <clears throat> so I'm going to use the medium, no, the small size of the mandrel, and I'm just bending up this way, getting my thumb in between the bunny ears, bringing it up like that, and now I'm going to use the 8mm section, just grasping, and then I'm going to bend both of them up and round. When it gets to where my pliers are in the way, I'm just going to remove and reposition them, bringing that back around. And you can see on this side, I bent it a little far. I want that on both sides actually, <laughs> because it's going to help us get the ends lined up. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to snip right about there making sure I have the flat side of my pliers facing the piece that's going to be our final piece. Flip it and snip it. <clears throat> and now I'm going to actually open this significantly and just slide that through. And then we can come back in, close that. I'm going to be using my bent nose pliers to angle these ends to where they're kind of butted against each other. There we go. Just like that. And then from here we can actually hold this with our pliers. And then, actually I'm going to hold it with my nylon jaw. Pliers. so that I can use my flat nose pliers oopsie mm. these are a bit too thick aren't they <clears throat> well I guess I'll use my flat nose pliers to grasp just down low and then make a little bit of a bend oops each way that way they look like a bale <clears throat> and a bale if you're not familiar with the term is just the part of the necklace that or the part of the pendant that a chain would slide through and so I'm actually going to try something a little different because this one, it's either going to be off offset too much to one side or the other. So to swap it out, we just open it back up. And we can totally use this again another day. But I'm going to try to make... <clears throat> Let's make a bale out of chain mail. That's still going to be a little tricky. Because our beads along the top edge here just are not evenly spaced. So I'm doing a bit of smushing. So. so I'd like to show you a few more options and here I'm using a 16 gauge 7 32nd ring. So this one. And you could just add a jump ring 
to over here. And close it. And a jump ring over here. Just between those herringbone. And this would be a great spot to just attach a chain or some macrame and you could have it hanging kind of organically there in the center or we could bring both of these. I'm going to actually have to remove this one to reposition it <clears throat> to the other side of that center bead. And then I am going to use I'm going to open two more of that same ring size. And I'm going to be using two of 18 gauge 3 16 And what I'm going to do with these is open and open something else that would look really cool instead of these two is if we had like an 18 or 16 gauge square uh, wire stainless steel ring those have a really cool look but I'm just gonna hook through those two and close and this is probably my favorite bail style um, made out of rings and then we're going to put the second one directly through those two rings and then close <clears throat> because it gives a lot of movement to the pendant that you're wearing. And then we're going to take the larger rings and hook through those two we just added. And close. And then repeat, threading through and close and so this right here is where let's pretend for a moment that this piece of wire is a chain that is where we would string through the necklace and it actually sits pretty centered ish <laughs> on the uh on the pendant and that's pretty cool so that being said I know that I said that I would do the flat backed cabochon. I'm actually going to make a whole separate tutorial just for this design because it's, I mean, it's going to be another two hours just in and of itself. But um, I, I really did, four hours ago when I started recording, I fully intended to wrap this one, but it's dark outside and my hands hurt and it's cold and I'm tired. <laughs> So we will be doing this one in a future tutorial. So be sure to subscribe and sign up uh, to our free newsletter. That way, if YouTube doesn't give you a notification of when we have new tutorials, we send out um, about 30 minutes prior to when we have a new tutorial or a shop update. We send out an email to whatever email address you sign up for or sign up with. Um, and that way you'll know uh, that we have a new video. And it also gives you an opportunity to make it to the premiere, but our videos are always here for the replay if you weren't able to make it for the premiere. That's just kind of a way of uh, really uh, of giving me some semblance of a social life. <laughs> and I get to hang out with y'all in the chat and answer your questions live for the full duration of the video. Like this one, if it's going to be, let, let's say, hopefully I can get it whittled down to like an hour and a half. Um, but... Uh, what was I saying? So for that hour and a half after it goes, the video becomes viewable, um, is the premiere. So I, it, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. Uh, if you are interested in supporting the channel or seeing what we're up to, all the links for everything are down below. Um, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook, um, but we also have our own website, 
backtoearthcreations.com uh, where we do weekly shop updates so you can get your hands on the same beads and wire and cabochons and gemstones that we use here in our videos and in our own artwork um, and that way you can get your hands on it to use in your artwork as well. Um, you can join our Happy Crafter Club either on our website or on Patreon for as low as a dollar a month and that gives you access to 20% off in our shop as well as uh, first dibs on our shop updates, access to our exclusive live streams, and the more you pledge, the more you get. So the higher the membership levels uh, go, um, you can get booty boxes mailed to you monthly uh, of our handmade cabochons and wire from Parawire, depending on what membership level you join. Uh, there is a video that should be linked down below as well uh, that takes you on a tour of our, our booty boxes. But thank you guys again so much for coming and hanging out. There was a lot. There's a lot you can do with herringbone. And I feel like this just scratches the surface. So I cannot wait to see what you guys do with it. And I will see you all next time. Oh, you can tag us on Instagram if you want to see your work. Uh, or post it to our wall on Facebook or anything like that. Because um, I do. I love getting to see what you guys make. Y'all are awesome. So thank you guys so, so much for coming and hanging out. I will see you all next time. And until then, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>